by Amaze. Win a 2021 Ferrari Roma by visiting amaze.com slash chamber. Lewis Hamilton threw away what looked like a potential win gifted to him in the closing stages of the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Seeming to take the lead at the restart, he instead sailed on down the escape road at the first corner, dropping to the very back of the train. Awkward. Did I leave the magic on? He asked the team. I could have sworn I turned it off. And as someone who accidentally left the oven on all night last Thursday, Lewis, I sympathise. But what is the magic? Why do Mercedes have it? And how did it end up so catastrophic for Hamilton? This video is sponsored by Omaze, which gives away unique prizes while donating money to chosen charities across the world. You, yes you, can win your very own 2021 Ferrari Roma if you want to live the Tifosi dream life. This car laughs at its F1 counterpart. F1 has six cylinders. This has eight. Hear that baby growl. F1 cars have one seat. This has four. Find three celebrity friends to go on road trips with. Can F1 spend a summer afternoon cruising through the Tuscan hills while listening to John Denver's Country Roads on repeat? I think not. Look at the style. Look at these features. For your chance to win this Ferrari, go to omaze.com slash chainbear where you can donate $10 and support the Charlie's Theron Outreach Project. This project supports community organisations that provide critical resources to youth-friendly healthcare, sexual health education and support for young people in Africa to empower protective skills against HIV. So for a chance to win this shiny Ferrari and support the Charlize Theron Outreach Project, go to omaze.com slash chainbear. The magic that Mercedes wield is a brake system override used to get the car warmed up for starts and restarts. Let's have a little reminder of the modern F1 braking system so we can fully appreciate where this magic comes in. Now before we got to the hybrid era of Formula 1, brakes were fully mechanical in that pressing the brake pedal would put pressure on hydraulic systems that would apply force to brake pedals that would then grip the brake discs rotating the wheels, thereby slowing the car down. A driver could adjust the brake balance forwards or backwards from the cockpit to choose how much of the braking force is applied to the front or rear wheels depending on how they need the car to respond. Push the balance rearwards and the driver frees up the front wheels a bit for steering under braking so they can trail brake into a long corner while maintaining control. Too much rear brake balance and the car becomes at risk of locking at the rear and spinning out. Move the brake balance forwards gives the car a stronger stable braking in a straight line as you might need into a heavy braking zone into a slow corner. This comes at a cost of being able to turn in with your foot on the brake so you'll need to get off the brake before attempting to navigate the corner. A lot of front brake bias will also risk the front wheels locking and hindering your ability to turn the car at all. This balance will be adjusted corner to corner and through the race depending on the characteristics of the track, the conditions of the car tyre and track surface and so on. But once the hybrids came in, things got a little bit more complex. With electric motor generators in the mix, some of the braking comes not just from the brake pad squeezing the brake discs and dumping the car's kinetic energy out via extreme heat. On top of this, some of the braking at the rear is achieved by stealing the rotational energy of the wheels to generate energy to be stored in the car's battery. As the battery charges, it slows the car down. Incidentally, if you ever have the chance to drive an electric car, it is wild. You'll notice how, as you take your foot off the accelerator, it immediately feels like it's braking. Not coasting, braking. You can actually pull up to a traffic light without ever touching the brake pedal. It feels so odd at first. Anyway, there's whole videos on my channel going into the technical details of how MGUKs harvest energy under braking, as well as how the actual brakes themselves work, but for this video we'll just get to the meat of it. Via electronics, the driver can adjust not just the front to rear brake bias, but also how much of the braking energy comes from harvesting versus mechanical braking. Your normal expected brake balance range will be slightly forwards to manage the way the car's weight shifts forwards onto the front axles under braking, but Merck's magic button shifts the balance really far forwards while also shutting down energy harvesting. Just full on brake disc power, mostly towards the front. Why would you ever want to use this button? Well, as covered previously on the channel, the material of the brakes and the rubber in the tyres both have an optimal temperature range. When inside this range, they will perform at their best, with strong, predictable grip and traction. You can brake hard and deep. You can lean on the tyres. 
during suspended periods of the race, like when following a safety car or your lap out of the pits or while on a warm-up lap to the grid, tyres and brakes can cool below this optimum temperature range, which means drivers will need to be a little more tentative in braking, turning and acceleration until they've warmed everything up again. And how do they warm them? Well, with braking, turning and acceleration. Braking induces friction in the brakes, producing juicy amounts of heat. Turning and hitting the accelerator rubs and stretches the rubber against the road, heating that up. That's why cars weave, slow and speed up on warm-up laps. They're doing whatever they can to get the rubber and brakes close to the right temperature. So with Merck's magic button whacking the brake bias forwards and forcing it to use just the brake discs, those front brakes will get very hot indeed, and in doing so will transfer some of that heat into the tyres around them. In this way, Hamilton and Bottas can get their tyres and brakes into optimal range faster and be on it at the start and through the opening lap to challenge or defend from those around them. But having all the brake bias front loaded is not good for when you actually want to attack the corner. Slam your foot on the brake pedal in anger now and the fronts will just lock up with so much of the braking force being directed their way. And that's what happened in Baku. At the restart, Hamilton used the magic to warm up his tyres and brakes, but then accidentally reactivated the magic brake mode, apparently, and the car was set up all wrong for attacking turn one. The fronts locked, the brakes snatched, and the car refused to turn. On he went into the escape road and lost what could have been a monstrous chunk of points in the championship fight. I'm sure they'll review and find a way to stop accidental presses of the magic button becoming an issue in future. No! Does anybody have any tape out there? I want to put some tape over the death button. I don't have any tape. Not a single person has tape. Nope. Merck may have tricks up their sleeve, but as with all magic, sometimes there are unintended dark consequences. But the championship now looks spicy as all hell.